one could easily criticize me for having uh, insubstantial content of late. And I'm going to be out of town for a couple days, so I may as well upload a video now, some more bu easy content book reviews. Um, yeah. So, um, with that, let's just keep the gravy train going. That's not the right term. Okay. Anyways, uh, we're going to start off just really quick with a book um, I haven't actually done much reading of linear algebraic groups um, by by Humphreys. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot to say because I haven't uh, looked at this book in any great detail. It's just one that um, I got for free and, uh, you know, kept it on my shelf. I've, I've cracked it open the odd time. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, that's covered in, in the book um, by Springer, right? Maybe it's a, a different perspective on certain things, right? Like, I don't think Springer goes into much detail about Zariski tangent spaces. Uh, so, in some sense, this might be a better place to start if you don't know um, algebraic geometry. So this is very much algebraic groups um, and really talking about, you know, uh, algebraic geometry of, um, uh, I mean, the, the fact that these are varieties, right? Uh, working with these as, as varieties. Uh, a lot of similar stuff, structure of reductive groups to, to Springer's book. Um, and then maybe, yeah, I mean, in some sense, not even quite as in-depth uh, in terms of like the uh, the isomorphism theorem and whatnot, so um, I don't know that much about the book, <laughs> but it's on my shelf. So uh, that's basically it for that. Here's another book, um, really a series of of two books uh, that I have not read yet, and really I would like to. Uh, but I'm not very good at reading French yet. And this is um, uh, Groth and Deeks, Alexander Groth and Deeks' um, Recollections. Uh, the, the first two volumes, I guess. Um, and I, so why did I buy this if, if my French is not very good yet? Uh, just because I, knew, I want to read this someday. And I figured I'd get it. I mean, you can find this online, but it's a really nice, you know, I think the design's really nice. And uh, well, let me put this down for a second so I can actually get it out. Um, it's interesting because, you know, uh, Growth and Deke is this uh, sort of almost biblical uh, figure in some sense in the history of, of math and algebraic geometry. And I've noticed that the, uh, uh, the paper on which this is printed um, is very much like Bible paper. Like, I don't know if anyone, uh, you know, I'm not particularly religious, but I grew up in a, you know, s like, some of the family around me was religious. And uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how, how else to say it other than this is, uh, feels like a, a Bible, which is interesting. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of different stuff. I've read, I think, maybe the first hundred pages of this because there was a, a, a PDF of an English translation floating around a while ago. Um, and in that first hundred pages, there's some really good quotes. Um, I will say that. It's a very, it's a very quotable um, book. You know, he's talking generally about mathematics. Like, there's this great quote of his about... You know, some mathematicians uh, are happy to move into a, a well-furnished house. Okay, I need to put this down again to um, get things together. But, you know, he's talking about how some mathematicians are happy to, you know, uh, move into a well-furnished house and just sort of, you know, mix around some of the furniture. And uh, others, you know, will maybe get an empty house um, and... and uh, uh, and work on furnishing it, but, you know, he's much more interested in, in building the houses, right? Which, uh, well, if you know anything about his math, of course, that's, you know, that's exactly what Grothendieck did in many respects. Um, 
he makes it sound better than I do. Well, at least the English translation of what he said sounds uh, better. Um, let's go with another, I think, um, underrated book next from my shelf. Yeah, extremely underrated. Well, oh, maybe I should grab, maybe I should grab a couple off the shelf. Um, and we'll see. I'm gonna grab this one. And I don't know. Do we start left to right? Maybe. I'll grab these two and, and see what comes of it. If we if we even make it that far. So um, let's jump into another under underrated classic though. Uh, elementary number theory uh, by Underwood Dudley. I think one of the most underrated books, um, at least if you're um, looking to learn elementary number theory. Uh, so uh, why is this book underrated? So number one, the price. I don't know what it goes for now, but I think back in the day I, I bought a new, a brand new copy of this online for only 20 bucks. I mean, it's not a huge book and it's not an advanced book, but uh, 20 bucks, especially if you're an undergrad, you can't, like, you can't afford to not buy this book. You know what I mean? Um, it's well written. It's very good for self-study, I would say. So again, it's, it's not a complicated book. This is by, not, you know, not like a graduate level text by any means. Um, oh, by the way, if, if you're familiar with some of the videos I did in number theory, I was following this book, right? So, um... Pretty standard stuff for an intro number theory course, right? Linear Diophantine equations, uh, congruences, Fermat, Wilson's theorem, perfect numbers, totient functions, quadratic congruences, um, reciprocity, etc. So, so some pretty standard beginning stuff, and um, but it's also it's funny, which I think is important. Like, the, I think the exercises are, are well-paced and well-placed. I think it gives you enough to do on your own, but sort of shows you how to do things on the way. Um, and, yeah, and there's little jokes in there uh, uh, peppered in throughout the actual body of the text, which I think helps keep it refreshing and readable, which, you know, reminds me that that's maybe something I should try to do more in my own um, mathematical writing. Uh, but getting back to the, the table of contents, um, you know, then we start getting into, uh, uh, like, uh, for, for Matt's, you know, for Matt's loss theorem, you know, proving, uh, proving it in case for n equals three, Pythag Pythagorean triples, um, you know, sums of squares, Pell's equation, uh, even start getting into, you know, uh, prime number formulas and, and bounds for prime. And I think, you know, there's some discussion of the Riemann hypothesis um, at the end of that, or at least the Riemann, yeah, Riemann zeta function. So um, really just a great, great, great book. I highly recommend it, um, especially if you're looking to self-study number theory, but also if you're an instructor, right? I mean, okay, nowadays there's... I think you don't need to make students buy books, right? There's so many great free resources online. But it is nice. Like, I'm obviously <laughs> the kind of person that likes a hard copy. And at 20 bucks, it's really affordable. So I don't think you need to feel too bad about convincing a student um, uh, to, to get this book. So I really like it. Um, let's go back towards... Uh, uh, I think there's a few books then today I want to talk about that I have not read in any great depth. Um, but let's start moving. We're going to jump back towards a, a Langland's direction in a second. Uh, the book SL2R um, by Lang. Serge Lang, maybe is that how you say it? I'm not, I don't know. Uh, and yeah, this is a very cool book. I mean... Uh, you know, I, I remember showing it to someone before and someone was like, wow, you can have a whole book about one group. I mean, yes, this, this group has sort of driven uh, a lot of mathematical development, you know. Um, I'll link it below, but I've, you know, probably one of my more popular series was just a couple of videos I did on SL2Z. Um, and it's just, you know, endlessly, endlessly fascinating. Um, so... Uh, I mean, yeah, I think he talks about this at the at the beginning. You know, I just saw the words like L-series and, and HECA, uh, HECA theory. I mean, uh, 
you know, this, this, this group has a, has a foundational role in theory of, of modular and automorphic forms and, there, and therefore the Langlands program. Uh, so there's lots of cool stuff in here, right? Uh, uh, talking about, uh, I would say it's more analysis driven, right? I mean, you can see uh, right in chapter one, we're talking about L2 spaces, Plancherelle measures, um, compact groups, uh, talking about some representation theory, um, spherical functions and, and, and transforms, which are, you know, it, I mean, a lot of those concepts also generalize to, to other groups, right? Um, operators of trace class, right? That's a whole, uh, important, uh, important study, right? But, but in, in this book, you really get, um, uh, like it's really for detail in in the case of SL2, right? Really in detail, which is great if you're going to go on to try and develop the more general stuff, which I I don't know a ton about the more general side of that because that's more like the Archimedean side of the Langlands program, which I'm less experienced with. Um, and I mean, this book in particular, I haven't I haven't studied a ton in detail, but uh, from what I have looked at, it's it's nice, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's other great stuff, uh, something I've, I've actually, um, you know, for some side projects or whatnot, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do, there's the, uh, the, the Ve representation, um, is really important, I've been meaning just to look, uh, you know, read up on that again, uh, some more, um, yeah, as you can see, lots more, you know, differential equation, Laplacian operators, uh, type stuff. Um, well, and of course, yeah, a, a bunch of uh, appendices. So, um, really interesting book. Uh, really nice blend in a sense. I mean, I to me, this book has a much more of an analytic bent. Um, but obviously, you're still talking about this group SL2R. That's that's super important. Uh, so, um, yeah, I I think it's a nice mix, right? I mean, that's kind of why I like. The area I'm in, Langlands type stuff, and and representation theory of of, of uh, topological groups and whatever, because um, you get to experience a lot of different areas. Uh, it also makes it hard to learn anything and do anything uh, harder. Uh, but um, uh, but yeah, it was a nice payoff. Uh, so let's see. Uh, here's a nice random book. So, so you know, these, uh, well, here's two, two side to side, right? I only really, I mean, these books never seem to get famous, right? These, these books with these, uh, you know, AMS publishing, uh, these, these sort of, uh, maroon and mahogany books. Um, I, I know very few of them that, that are ever, uh, famous, right? You know, like there's lots of, uh, uh, GTM, uh, yellow titles are, are maybe some of the, the more famous books, right? Um, but this one's pretty good, uh, for a random find. I'm not saying, like, go out and find this very, uh, obscure particular book, but, uh, it's not a terrible thing that's on my, on my shelf, you know? Like, uh, there's other books that I would probably turn to first if I was gonna teach a course on this stuff, um... But you know, I would maybe, I would maybe like give this book out uh, while I'm attached to a lot of my books. Definitely lend it out, you know, to someone interested in in reading a bunch of this stuff, um, um, or just straight up give it to to someone. Uh, so yeah, this is just some basic module theory, um, right? Talking about uh, you know introducing rings and modules. Um, talking about prime ideals, but also from like a, 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 modu uh, a, a module theoretic perspective, you know, uh, semi-prime rings is maybe something in a, a, a typical like introductory to module theory course you wouldn't um, come across. So like this book does have a very particular direction in mind. Um, you know, Artinian, Netherian rings, idempotence, um, uh, so, so, you know, there's, there's sort of like, uh, I guess you can, you can do a more homological, uh, algebra categorical, uh, perspective of rings right off the bat, but then maybe you want to go inside a ring more and, and, uh, study those sorts of things. So in some sense, this, this book is good, um, for that. 
at least at the beginning, but, but there's, um, you know, we, we do get into important stuff like projective and injective modules. Um, like I remember looking through this book before and, and seeing some, some decent exercises, uh, not, not my favorite, uh, typesetting in the world, but, um, uh, that's fine. Um, and yeah, you know, and it does even have some stuff about homological algebra and, and flatness and tensor products and whatnot. So, um, yeah, overall, I would say, like, again, yeah, not not a book I'm, I'm telling you you have to run out and go buy. But as, as far as a fine, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I, I found this. I think I found this in a random bookstore for like 10 bucks one day. Um, speaking of, here's another one I, I, I found. Um... Uh, automorphic uh, functions, and I think I picked up this book long before I, I had any inkling I would do automorphic type stuff, um, but it just sounded interesting, um, so I gave it a shot. I don't think, I think when I took it home and I really started reading it, I was not interested uh, so much in what it had to offer. I, I, I think I just heard something, something automorphic and uh, connected to Langlands, and I wanted to understand, like, Wiles proof at the time, um, so I thought it'd be a good idea. Uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with this book, I just, I don't know if I'm as, uh, into it. Well, at least, um, that I was, you know, uh, okay, let me say, obviously this does have a lot of connections, that sort of thing, right? But, but, uh, the things I saw in here just didn't appeal to me at the time, although there's definitely some, uh, chapters that are, are interesting, right? So we're talking about hyperbolic elliptic um, uh, uh, transformations, uh, which, uh, oh, Fuchsian groups, right? So, I mean, that's, uh, spe speaking of, speaking of, like, SL2R, right? Like, Fuchsian groups also is, is sort of born out of the study um, here. Um, and we do talk about, so not automorphic, forms, but, but automorphic functions, you know, which have these certain, uh, translation properties, um, uh, you know, under, under discrete subgroups and whatnot, uh, you know, we've got, uh, theta series, which are in, important, um, well, a lot of this, a lot of this stuff I didn't, uh, uh, I never really went into detail. I mean, conformal mappings, there's a, there's a pretty nice chapter on, uh, the theory of, of conformal mappings, which is, um, uh, important. I think, yeah, I had a, I had a really nice course on conformal mappings in my master's degree. At least half of it was about, uh, conformal mappings. Um, but I still, looking back on this book, don't find it the most understandable. Um, and yeah, what to, what to say about at the, at the end of it. Uh, yeah, I mean... It is a book. Uh, <laughs> I guess I really, yeah. It just, what can I say? It didn't. It it didn't hit the spot um, for me. Um, probably, probably not a book I'm gonna keep. Uh, like when it's time to move far and away, I will just leave it behind, most likely. Um, yeah. So that's eighteen minutes. That's about the usual time. We got a, a few books done. Um, a range of, of topics again, and a, a range of agreeableness of the text. Yeah, not everything on my shelf is going to be something I love. Um, but if we're going left to right, let me tell you, there's, uh, there's a couple good ones that are, are going to pop up uh, in the next episode. So there's a little, little teaser for you. Um, looking forward to that.